So just as the title suggests, in today's video, we're gonna talk about five things that you could potentially need to help you get better at landscape photography. Hi guys, right, so before I start, I just wanna say a few things. Now, one thing I know is that I sometimes tend to speak too fast in my videos, so I'm gonna try my best to talk a bit slower. I do apologize, it's something that we've got in the family and it's not like I'm in a rush or anything, but it's just the way it sometimes comes across in the video. So I will try to slow my pace and hopefully I can um, be more understandable to many of those who can't understand me when I speak really fast. Okay, <laughs> just as an example. Second thing is I may be looking down here and this is only because this is where most of my notes are, my iPads over here. And uh, today I do have a cameraman available who's helping me out. So he's over here. George, say hello. 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 Um, so yeah, that'll be that. And lastly, more importantly, I got a message from the millions of messages that I don't get. <laughs> I got a message that somebody asked me, go, Imran, why do you not do frequent videos? And in all honesty, the, the, the truth simply is, is because I'm actually not a YouTuber as such. Um, I'm so busy in my everyday life and other stuff that I do where I don't actually get time. YouTube isn't my first priority, but it's up there and I'm trying my best to be as frequent as I can. But at the same time, I want to spend time in quality content, so I'm not having to rush and think of something that's not gonna be relevant for the video that week. So this is the only reason I try to um, deliver quality content that I know will be good for you guys, good for me, and try to do it the best I can and the best time that I can. Apologies if you are anticipating the next video. I will try to be more frequent, but again, I can't promise. Again, like I said, I'm not a YouTuber as such. This is why it's not my number one priority. Just putting the facts out there for you guys. So sorry to disappoint the two viewers I've probably got, but hey, it is what it is. And for everybody else, it's lovely to see you guys again. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do consider subscribing. There is tons of stuff on here that will be um, useful for everybody so something to learn if, if it's not there yet it's definitely coming soon because i have got a list of videos that i'm due to make so let's get straight into today, into today's video today we're talking about landscape photography specifically because it's what i mainly do i always go out and do landscape photography if you have a look at my previous videos you'll see that there's loads of videos where i'm traveling doing landscape photography talking about various filters tripods etc to help you guys really get into it because it's a number one question i get asked when i'm doing a lot of talks and stuff what do we need how can we really excel and how can we you know what's our starting point now there isn't really anything as such you obviously need a camera and tripod and a few other things but let's break it down so the first thing in the list is an obvious one it's a camera so when i say camera this could be any camera now in the day and age where you got fantastic cameras like you know on the iphone and uh huawei's and all that kind of stuff you can produce quality imagery on any of these but it's the first thing you will ever need there are a few points that I will stress that you do need with a camera. I'm using a mirrorless camera, so it's much smaller than the 1DX I used to use. And there's a few reasons why I'm using this. One, better technology. Two, lightweight. And three, I can carry two of these if I need to do anything. And it's so much more versatile, so much more flexibility that goes onto this. And I have the rotating screen on this that makes it a lot easier to see what I'm doing. It delivers amazing video and absolutely stunning photography. So it does help me get the images and the video quality that I need. So it works well for me. One of the main things when I'm going outside with this camera is that it is weather sealed to an extent, but it isn't water resistant. So please don't be mistaken by any camera that says water resistant, because they won't be. They may have a seal on there that helps them uh, prevent getting wet to an extent. So the water doesn't get into the sensor, uh, leak through the, see, seeping through the lens and the little uh, connection points. So that's why it's important to get the best camera that you possibly can. So just to recap, a few tips to know on the camera that you need, look out for lightweight, look out for size, the battery life, and if it's weather sealed or not. These things will help you go a long way in your photography journey. This now takes me on to the second point, which is an L bracket. An L bracket is something that goes on the side of your camera. It's like a base plate and it goes all the way along the bottom and on the side and it's shaped like an L. These are very versatile and are normally really, really lightweight, but if you're into uh, landscape photography and you sometimes want to take the occasional panel or want to shoot in portrait mode these help you flip your camera from 
landscape to portrait in just a second without having to move your camera and move your tripod, recompose and you know, basically moving your center point from there. So this is the L bracket I've got on my camera. Traditionally, if you were to take a panorama without the L bracket, what you would do is you'd have your camera like this. And if you want to take a pano, you just go from left to right. And that's absolutely fine because your center hasn't changed. But if you want to do a, land, uh, a portrait sort of uh, pano, you'd have to rotate it to the side now. So now your center has changed. And then you would have to move accordingly. And as you can see, the center is now shifting and the images are going to be a bit out of place. Not hard to fix, but this is such an easier way to do. Instead, with an L bracket, all you have to do is put it onto the side because you have the groove over here as well for the Arca Swiss. Put it in. And now, whenever you're going left to right, your sensor is at the center of rotation and your images are going to be exactly where you need it to be and you get perfect overlap and perfect stitching abilities. A few things you want to look out for in a L plate. Lightweight, it needs to be hard wearing and reliable. Compact and small so you can take it wherever you need to take it. Now moving on from here, this nicely ties into the next subject which is the tripod. Now, tripod is, in my opinion, something that you should really invest in heavily and buy once, buy quality. So the tripod I have is a Gitzo series. It's one of the best ones that I can afford. This at the time did cost me about a thousand pound, give or take. A few things that you wanna look out for in a tripod is a reliable head. For example, on this head, you can see we have three different uh, knobs on here. One of them is for friction or tension. The other one is for the overall uh, control of the movement of the head. And the third one allows us to do panels and basically move our head left or right or whichever way we wanna move it. That's one of the things and also you want to hold, watch out for the hold capacity or the weight capacity that this head can have. The second thing you want to look out for are the legs themselves. Now these are obviously the main thing. Tripods do come in different shapes and sizes. For example, you have this small little tripod over here. Again, it's made out of quality materials, but it is a little weighty. That's due to the head, but you can carry it 1DX, no problem. The second one that you have here, you can see the Gitzo. This is a three section tripod. It has the twisting uh, mechanism on the legs to open them. They're made of carbon fiber. The, this tripod does fold in on itself, making it extremely compact. It goes onto the side of my bag really easily. I also can go into my suitcase if I'm traveling abroad, and I've done this quite frequently. So a few things you wanna look out for when buying a tripod is lightweight, how compact it can be, the height you can achieve, how easy it is to pack up and carry, and how much weight you can actually put on the overall tripod and head. What I normally do suggest is an average of 10% of the cost of your camera and lens should go on your tripod. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is filters. Now this is an optional thing. Now we all know photography is a form of art and art is very subjective. So my style of photography is long exposure. So when you are out shooting the sea or a stream, a river or clouds as such, and you don't want it really silky smooth, you can use a lower density um, filter like a three stop or a six stop even and get the water flashing, but not as much so you can create drama and mood and really show angry skies with a little bit of movement, but probably not a lot. It all depends on what the sky and what the clouds are doing and what kind of filters you've got. So the filters do come in different forms. You have ND filters, which are covered all the way. And then you also have GND filters, which are graduated filters, which cover the top element of the filter, but not the bottom. This allows you to balance the top half of the image with the foreground and get a really nice, evenly exposed image so you can create drama and mood and tension and whatever it is you're trying to achieve. The higher, the more expensive ones you use, the ones that are made of glass, tend to have zero color cast and tend to have more coatings on them to make them water repellent. And you will also want to try to look out for something that comes in a nice travel carry case so you can protect them. Remember, you've invested heavily in these filters, so you want to make sure they're protected well and the system that you've got looks after this really well and it all ties in nicely. So the one I'm using is by Nissi. It has a built-in variable uh, CPL, so I can rotate that where I want. Then I can add my filters onto it very easily and I can see exactly what I'm doing without having to add or take anything away from here. This makes the system very compact, very easy to use and very lightweight as well. So a few things you wanna look out for when buying an ND filter system is 
color neutral, so there's no uh, tinge on there. A protective, nice carrying system, and make sure they're lightweight and they're compact, so easy for you to carry and protect it while in transport. So this comes up to the last bit that I actually wanna talk about. You've got all of this gear, you've got your lenses, your cameras, your tripods, your filters, but they almost go somewhere. Exactly, they're gonna go in a bag. Now the bags come in different forms. You have your shoulder bags, you have your backpacks, then you have your nice fancy shoulder bags. They all do the same thing. What you wanna look out for is one that's gonna suit you for landscape photography. So this one that I have is by Billingham. I always use this when I'm going to do events or weddings when I don't need to carry it for long, but I do really wanna show a little bit of style. This bag has definitely got it. If I'm going out shooting in the streets, for example, and I don't mind holding my tripod in my hand, I'll use this leather bag. This one I bought from Amazon. I can't remember the brand name, but it's a really, really good bag made of leather. These next few bags that I'm gonna show you are from F-Stop Gear. They make the best, again, in my opinion, hiking bags, stroke camera bags, or should be the other way around really, camera bags, stroke hiking bags that you can actually buy. They are so versatile, they're so easy to use, and as you advance, they get better and better. So this one is a Satori AXP. I have had this bag for over 12 years. It's one of the first bags I bought, and I paid over 300 pounds for it. That was because of bag and the internal ICU, which comes in and you can use this in different sizes. They come in different shapes and different sizes for you to put different stuff in them. This is why it cost me a lot of money. But for the time, this bag had everything I needed and it still does. I still use this today. It's the perfect size. This one is this big brother. This is a Suka and it's much better in terms of materials. The zips have a much better weather sealing to them. Again, they're not water resistant, but they are much better weather sealing. And they have many compartments. You have a top compartment where you can put food or accessories or whatever you need. You have uh, many internal pockets as well. If I open this bag and you can have a look at the inside, you'll see that you can get various different ICUs in here. An ICU is what they call an internal camera unit. The camera unit itself can be modified so you can reshape it and model it as you want for the gear you take in. And the extra space in the bag allows you to carry any waterproofs that you want to take with you, any food you want to take with you, uh, any other equipment you want to have that isn't necessarily a camera gear but you might need it for the hike or a walk or whatever it is put it in the top of the bag and walk with it these bags are made with really really high quality thin materials that allow you allow the bag actually to be lightweight easy to use they, they, they fall down really well if you ever you want to take them somewhere or you want to again for traveling if it's a bag that's too big for a cabin you can fold it up put it in the um, suitcase with your tripod, put the ICU separate, put all your gear in there, and this is how I actually travel, and off it goes, check it in, no problems whatsoever. Okay, so that's that. Those are the five things that I think you need, which are gonna be crucial for landscape photography. I hope you found this uh, video useful. If you have, please do leave me a comment below. If you haven't, please tell me why, I'd be happy to hear. Again, any criticism is positive, so I will do my best to make them better. And don't forget to comment and subscribe, guys, and I will see you guys in the next video.